Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, uh, the time has come that we are going to study the words of God in this Bible study. So before we uh, continue in our study, before we go on, we would like to invite everybody to stand for a short prayer. Our merciful and great God, Yahuwah, Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity that we could gather ourselves together with this technology so that we could learn together your instructions, your words that we truly need in order for us to be with you on the day of your wrath. Please bless us, Father. Continue to give us the understanding and send us the Holy Spirit that your words that will be read to us tonight will be embedded deep in our hearts, in our minds, and we could understand them. We could figure out the truth and we can continue following and observing each and every one of them. We firmly believe, Father, that you will be with us in our studies. For all of this, we are asking in the name of our Lord and Redeemer, Yahushua HaMashiach, Yahushua the Christ. Amen. All right, so we are going to study about uh, the first and the second resurrection. That's what you can read right there. Because we were asked, you know, what do you believe about, you know, the end of the world or, or the salvation of your soul? What do you believe about it? But what we believe is what the Bible teaches. No more, no less. And that's what we are going to be sharing with you. Now, other people have an idea on how the world will be ended. They do have an idea. And we do respect that idea that they have and that they believe because that's their faith. We are not going to attack those ideas of other people who don't belong to us inside the church of Yahusha. So what we are going to deliver to you is what we believe and what we are going to share with you. This is what we believe. Now, again, as we always say, when we delivered to the people what we believe when we share what we believe to you before you believe it you must investigate it first try to figure out did we tell the truth by making sure you read the bible or the holy scriptures why do we say that because there are lots of people who have faith right now but if you ask them why do they believe that way they cannot explain it why because they just listen to a preacher like me and what the preacher told them, they did not even bother to investigate it. They believe it. So when they are asked, why do you believe that way? They cannot answer it. That's not the right way of believing. We must copy the Bereans. We always say that, right? Now, let us talk about the first and the second resurrection. There are things that will happen at the very end of our journey as Yahushans or followers of Yahusha and journey of those who do not follow Yahusha on our term, I mean, on, on what we believe. Because there are people who are following Yahusha, but to us, uh, is that really the way to follow Yahusha? Is that really the way to join? Who are really the followers of Yahusha? You know, that's, uh, that was discussed uh, many times already. And we believe Yahushans will have an ending in their journey here on earth. And also those who don't believe in Yahusha will, uh, will end their journey on this earth too. Now, now, what must we understand about the end of our journey here on earth? Whichever you are part of, you, you, you might be a Yahushan, you might not be a non-Yahushan or non-Christian. And all people in the world will have an end, you know, that's what it means. Now, what must we understand about that in whichever you are at? You're with Yahushua, you're not with Yahushua. What should we understand that about that in? Let us read in Matthew 24, 36 to 39. And that's what we can read. You can read it on your screen. I will read it to you. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself, only the father knows. 
when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's time, in those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Now, what must we understand about the end of everyone's journey? We will never know the exact day and time of the end of our journey. Who is the only one who knows it? Well, according to what we have read, it's there, the Father only. So Yahuwah is the only one who knows when will be the end of everyone's journey here on earth, right? Now, according to what we have read, it says there, angels doesn't know it. So those angels in heaven doesn't know when it's going to happen. The son himself, who is the son? Yahushua, the savior himself, doesn't know when it's going to happen. Now, for those who are truly are in Yahushua the Christ, when will be the end of their journey here on earth? Now, now that's the, the question. It's not, we are not tricking anybody. You, you know, we are not saying that, hey, you said that uh, everybody want everybody else journey. No, but there will be an end of a journey of those who truly are in Christ Yahusha. Those who truly are in Christ Yahusha. That was why our question was, for those who are truly are in Christ Yahusha, when will be the end of their journey here on earth? Let us listen here in, and you can read it too. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 18. It's on your screen. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So our question was, for those who are truly of Christ, Yahushua, when will be the end of their journey here on earth? Dead or alive, Yahushua, the first resurrection. See, the first resurrection will be the end of the journey of true Yahushuans true Christians. It's stated right there. How about those who are still alive? Well, those who are still alive, Yahushians, it's clearly stated there. Together with those who were first resurrected, they will meet the Lord in the air. So meeting the Lord, Yahusha, in the air. So that will be the end of the journey of those who truly of Yahusha the Christ here on earth. That's the end of our journey. We are Yahushians. That will be the end of our journey. You know, other people that uh, first resurrection, they call it the rapture. That's how other people call it. But we call it the first resurrection. So the first resurrection is the end of our journey. Now, how is that going to take place? How quick is it going to take place? Let's read 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52. It says there. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Not everybody will die, like what you have already read. There will be those who are still alive that will meet the Lord in the air. Okay, let me continue. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. How quick is it going to be? How quick is it going to take place? The first resurrection, the meeting of Yahushians in the cloud and Yahusha the Christ. Well, it will take place in a twinkling or in a blink of an eye, in a moment. 
an average human blink lasts only a tenth of a second, which is 100 milliseconds. Just try to imagine how fast it will be, how quick it will be. In a blink of an eye, it will happen. When? I don't know. Yahushua doesn't know. The angels doesn't know. Only the Father knows when, but it will happen so quick that you don't even notice it. Now, how was it illustrated to happen? Let us read what the book of Matthew said. Matthew 24, 40, 41. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour on the, at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. So how was it illustrated to happen? Well, there are two, those who will be taken and there are those who will be left. How is it going to take place? In a blink of an eye. So just try to imagine that if you will put your imagination to this thing that's going to happen, you are talking to your friend, probably who is a Yahushian, right? And then your friend disappears. You got what? Left behind. That's what's gonna happen. Well, it means like if you're both Yahushians, both of you will disappear, isn't it? In a blink of an eye. Why? Well, because you have to meet the Lord in the air. That will happen so fast. Now, what will take place after Yahushua met those who are his in the air? Those who are his true followers in the air. What will happen next? Let us read according to what we can read in Revelation 19.7. And this is what is recorded. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Let us give him glory and honor for the marriage of the Lamb has come at last. And his bride, the redeemed, has prepared herself. So what's going to happen? What will take place next after Yahushua met his church or his true followers in the air? Well, according to what we are reading right here, the marriage of the Lamb will take place. There will be a wedding or marriage between the lamb and his bride. Now, who is the bride? The redeemed, the Bible said. Now, we already know what was redeemed by the lamb, the church that belongs to him, the church of Christ, or now we call the church of Yahushua, the church that belongs to Yahushua. He redeemed it with his blood. Now, according to the testimony of the Holy Scriptures, who actually is the bride? How, how are we sure that the church is the bride? Well, let's hear in Ephesians 5, 25, 32. Let us read this. For a husband, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's words. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as the, they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of his body. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Now, who is the bride? Why do we say it's the church? Well, the Apostle Paul illustrated in his testimony the relationship between Yahusha and his church. It is like the relationship of a husband to his wife. See, the husband is Yahusha the Christ. The wife is his buddy, the church. Now, did Paul point out 
who the bride actually is. Now let us read what he said. This is what he told the early Christians. This is his testimony when he was talking to the early Christians of the early Yahushans. This is what we can read in 2 Corinthians 11, 2. I am jealous for you with a jealousy that comes from God. I promise to give you to the Christ. He must be your only husband. I want to give you to the Christ to be his pure bride. So did Paul point out who the bride is? Yes, it's the church. See, he was saying and telling the Christians or the Yahushians during his time, he said, clearly, he must be your only husband. Those who are in the church, the followers of Yahushua the Christ. And you must be pure as his bride. So the bride are those who followed Yahushua. The bride are those who became to parts of the body of Yahushua. But who amongst those who were called in the church will become the true bride of the Christ? Everybody who joined the Iglesia, everybody who joined the body. Oh, I am in the church. I am part of the church. I am a believer of Yahushua. I am part of the bride. Then I will meet him in the air. Oh, wait a minute. Let's read what the scripture says. Second Corinthians 11, 3 to 4. This is what we can read. But I am afraid that your minds will be led away from your true and pure following of Christ. This could happen just as Eve was tricked by that snake with his clever lies. You seem to be quite patient with anyone who comes to you and tells you about a Yahushua that is different from the Yahushua we told you about. You seem very willing to accept a spirit or a message that is different from the spirit and message that you receive from us. So who amongst those who were called in the church will become the bride of the Christ, but those who did not accept the different spirit and message. They are the people who receive the message from the apostles. They did not change their minds. Now remember what we have heard in these verses that we have just read. You seem to be quite patient with anyone who comes to you and tells you about a Yahusha that is different from the Yahusha we told you about. You seem very willing to accept a spirit or a message that is different from the spirit and message that you receive from us. See, that's why when we figure out that what we have received is a message that was not the message of the apostle, we must make a change. Don't be afraid of a change. We must accept right away. Oh, I made a mistake. That was a mistake. I'm going to adopt this one. I'm going to what? To embrace this belief because it is more making sense than the others. So remember, the first resurrection is where the Yahushians will, will uh, be given their gift or the reward the end of their journey here on earth. And that is actually a guaranteed salvation. So for us Yahushan, that's what we are waiting for. The first resurrection. We want to be included in the first resurrection. Why? Because for us through Yahushans, that will be the end of our journey here on earth. And that will be the guarantee of our salvation. Once we got into that, once we got included into the first resurrection, and if you're still alive and that actually happened and you are truly with Yahusha, you don't need to die no more. You will be what? Meeting the Lord in the air. That is what we want as Yahushans. That's why when they ask us, what will happen to you on the day of judgment? No, don't ask me that. What will happen to me on the day of the rewarding, on the day of the first resurrection? I'm in, the, I'm in Christ, Yahushua. I will meet him in the air. That's what we want to focus. Meeting Yahushua in the air. Why do we say that? We're going to find out later on. Now, what will take place after that wedding? Remember, there will be a wedding, right? So in the first resurrection, those who truly belong to Yahushua will meet Yahushua in the air, and they will 
marry. There will be a marriage between them and Yahusha. That's what's going to happen. Their wedding will take place. What proves that? What will take place after uh, that, that in that wedding? Let us find out the, the thing that uh, will happen next after the wedding of those who truly belong to Yahusha and Yahusha himself. Now remember the bride, the chaste virgin. They are not those who just join the church. They are those who truly follow Yahusha. They are the clean ones. Now what will take place after that wedding? Let's read here in Revelations 19, 11, 13, 14, and 16. Then I saw heaven open and there was a white horse. Its rider is called faithful and true. It is with justice that he judges and fights his battles. The robe he wore was covered with blood. His name is the word of God. The armies of heaven followed him, riding on white horses and dressed in clean white linen. On his robe and on his thigh was written the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So after that wedding, what's going to happen? What's going to take place? Well, according to what we have read, it is clear Yahusha will be sent by Yahuwah for the second time. And this is now the second coming of the Messiah. That's the second coming, right? That's the second coming. But is he going to, is that already judgment day? Well, for us, it's not yet. Not yet judgment day. That's the second coming of Yahushua or the Messiah. Now how is it going to take place? Well, he will be riding on a white horse and there will be armies of heaven behind riding also on white horses and dressed in clean white linen. What are they going to do? They will wage war against Shatan or the devil or the Antichrist or the, and their armies. That's what's going to happen. There will be a battle. There will be a war that will take place when he comes down uh, for the second time, his second advent, riding on a white horse. Now, in addition to these things, if you want to uh, check it out, you remember that uh, Yahusha becomes the kings of kings this time, right? According to what we have read, he will be the king of kings. Now, he entered once in Jerusalem the first time. He was riding on a donkey. Remember that? He was riding on a donkey. And, and he's the king of the Jews, but he was murdered because of that. They did not actually accept him. They shunned him away and they murdered him. Now, this time, the second time, he got an army with him. Now, besides the armies of heaven, who else will be with Yahushua on his second coming? Remember, he just got married and he married those who are in his body or in his church. He took to him those dead Christians and those who are still alive. Remember what we have already said and remember what we have already studied. Now, beside the armies of heaven, who else will be with Yahusha on his second coming? Here in Jude 1, 14, 15, this is what we can read. Now, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, besides the armies of heaven, who else will be with Yahusha on his second coming? Well, his saints, the Lord will execute judgment on uh, to convict all those who are ungodly, the Bible said, who are going to be with the Lord in executing it. The saints, now how many are there? Then of oh, thousands of them, many of them, many of them. So those are the ones who were already included in the first resurrection. So they will come down with Yahusha to execute judgment. But, but, you know, people say, oh, that's already the day of judgment. No, the judgment is not just in the blink of a finger. It will take time. Now, who are the saints being referred to according to the scriptures? Let us listen here in 1 Corinthians 1, 2. And this is what we can read. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Yahushua, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Yahushua the Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So who are the saints? 
of the saints are those who are in the church, right? Those who actually met him already in the first resurrection and those who are in the church who are still alive and did that what is right. They were already with you. They already married you, so they're already up there. They're coming down. So here's the question. Those who were included in the first resurrection, will they be judged? Not anymore, because they were already given what? The reward, eternal life. They will be with Yahusha forever, right? So they met Yahusha in the air. They got married. They went with Yahusha down here on earth to execute judgment. Now, how is it going to take place? Is it going to be like the twinkling of an eye too? When he comes back, when he comes down for the second time in Acts 1, 9 to 11. This is what we can read. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Yahushua who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So how is it going to take place? You know, when he was riding on a horse with his army, with the saints, with those who are actually already married him, those who, got, who were included in the first resurrection, how is it got, that going to happen? The blink of an eye too, when he comes down? No. The Bible clearly said, well, that's it. Everybody can see, right? This same Yahusha who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner. See, they were watching him left, going towards heaven. So he will be watched also. What proves that? What proves that? What further proves that that is what is going to take place? That he will be seen by many when he comes back together with his army, in, in, in angels, armies of angels, and his saints. In Revelation 1, 7, a, this is what we can read. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. See what verb proves that that is what's going to take place? Well, everyone will see him coming. Therefore, it's not in a blink of an eye. In a blink of an eye, that will take place on the first resurrection, you don't even see it. Those who are Yahushan will just vanish from the face of the earth and meet the Lord in the air. That's what's going to happen, according to what we can read. Now, how will that? And they always remember they will. They, they will. When he comes back, he will stage war. Now, how will that war take place? And where is it going to take place? Remember that he got an army behind him. How will that war take place? And where? In Revelations, sixteen. 14, 16, and this is what we can read. For well, they are actually the spirits of demons performing miraculous signs. And they go out to the kings of the entire inhabited earth to gather them together for the war of that, that great day of God, the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and who keeps his clothes. That is stay spiritually ready for the Lord's return so that he will not be naked, spiritually unprepared, and men will not see his shame. And they, demons, gathered the kings and armies of the world together at the place which in heaven is called Armageddon, or Armageddon. Okay, so how will that war or the battle will take place and where is gonna take place? Well, according to what we have read, you know, there will be a battle and then, uh, of course, uh, that will take place in Armageddon. Now, Armageddon, where is that? Let's show you a map. Yeah, that's the place which is in Hebrew is called Armageddon or Armageddon, according to Britannica. Now, Armageddon refers to a geographical location. That, that place is about 80 miles north of Jerusalem. So it will take place there. Remember, he left from that place and then he's, he went up and everybody saw him. Now he's coming down to stage war with the devil and his armies. That's what's gonna happen. And that will take place right there. Well, 
sort of according to what we can read, right? Because that that is, that is in Armageddon according to the the Bible, so according to Revelations verse 16, 16, 16, Armageddon it will take place. Okay, that's why we believe that that's the place that it will take place. Now, who will be the one <coughs> that will come out victorious in that battle in that war? Revelations twenty verses one to three. Let's read this one. And then I saw an angel descending from heaven, holding the key of the abyss, the bottomless pit, and a great chain was in his hand. And he overpowered and laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent of primeval times, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him securely for a thousand years, a millennium. And the angel hurled him into the abyss and closed it and sealed it above him, preventing his escape or rescue, so that he would no longer deceive and seduce the nations until the thousand years were at an end. After these things, he must be liberated for a short time. Well, there's still a time huh, when he got liberated, uh, liberated. So who will be the one who will come out victorious from this war? <clears throat> Yahusha and his army. Us. You know, Yahusha and his army of heaven. Why? Well, according to what we have read, Shatan will be in prison for a thousand years. So he will be he will be at a losing side, losing it. He will lose this, this battle. He will be overpowered and he will be laid hold of, you know, as a dragon or the serpent, that's Satan, and he will be bound securely for a thousand years or for a millennium. You see, that's the time. Yahushua will establish his kingdom. That's how he will be king, called kings of kings. Does it make sense? That makes sense. Right? So the second coming of Yahushua is to stage war against the devil. And the devil will be what? Will be in the abyss. He will be locked up. He will be sealed down there. He cannot escape and nobody can rescue him. That's what the scripture says. For a thousand years, he will be there. And that four thousand years, that thousand years, what will be life here on earth? Remember, we already came with Yahushua, right? We came with Yahushua. That's what we believe. We came with Yahushua. We won the battle. So we are still here on earth. We have a kingdom, the millennial kingdom. And we are all immortals. Start to imagine that. That's a great reward that we're going to have. If we are truly of Yahusha, if he will actually consider us as his. That's why we had to make certain that we are Yahushan, that we do what he requires us to do in order for us to be with the first resurrection. That's what we want to be, the first resurrection. Because for us, Yahushans, that is salvation. And not only salvation from the lake of fire, but that is also a reward. You will be immortal while coming back. When you come back here on earth for a thousand years, you will stay here immortal and mortal forever. Now, after Shatan was in prison, okay, let's, let's continue uh, the series of events that could happen according to what we believe, according to what the scripture is saying. After Shatan was in prison, what will be the kind of life here on earth during the millennial year or reign of Yahushua Hamashiach? Let us read here in Isaiah. This is how Isaiah actually wrote it in, in, in his uh, prophecy. Isaiah 11, 1 to 2, 6 to 9. Let us read. Then a shoot, the Messiah, we know already who the Messiah is, will spring from the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. And the spirit of Yahuwah will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of Yahuwah. And the wolf will dwell with a lamb and the leopard will lie down with a young goat and a calf and a young lion and the fatted steer together 
and a little child will lead them, and a cow and a bear will graze together. Their young will lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an, the ox, and the nursing child will safely play over the whole of the cobra. Just to imagine that. And the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den and not be hurt. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. So our question was, after Shatan was in prison, because he lost the battle, he lost the war. What will be the kind of life here on earth during the millennial year of reign of Yahushua? 1,000 years, he will be reigning here. Yahushua will be here, the king, right here on earth. Right here on earth, Yahushua will be the king of kings. That's what we have already read. Well, the kind of life is good. Just try to imagine what God will do. You see that? There will be no more wild animals that will devour a person, devour each other, you know? And if you're gonna be reading more about this uh, prophecy of Isaiah, you know, you will be living in your houses and nobody is going to attack you there. There will be no more home invasion. There will be no more crime. Well, because according to what we have read, we have the full knowledge of Yahuwah already. Every human being already have the full knowledge of Yahuwah. And that's what the Bible said, right? But the problem is after a thousand years, that will be for a thousand years. Now, always remember, yeah, that's, that Satan will still have ample time to do something else, to do something else after a thousand years. That's what the Bible is telling us, right? Now, after a thousand year reign of Yahushua the Christ, what will take place based on what we can read from the scriptures? Let us read this one in Revelations 25 and then 12. The rest of the dead, the non believers, those who don't belong to the church of Yahusha, right? The rest of the dead, the non-believers did not come to life again until a thousand years were completed. Now, if I continue reading that, this is already the second what? Resurrection. The first resurrection was done. It was been home more than a thousand years had passed. And then the rest of the dead, the non-believers, did not come to life again until a thousand years were completed. There are also dead people. There will be people who will be dying as we go along in a thousand years, right? That's what it is. But <clears throat> here is the second resurrection. This is the first resurrection. And I saw the dead and the great and the small is standing before the throne and books were open. Then another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as written in the books. That is everything done while on earth. You see, our question was, after a thousand years reign of Yahushua, the Christ here on earth, after that millennial kingdom, what will take place based on what we can read in the scriptures? Well, the rest of the dead, the Bible said, those who didn't make it in the first resurrection will be judged this time. Now this time, this is, Judgment, right? This is now judgment. The one you call on the day of judgment. Now this time, this is judgment. Oh, the first resurrection, that was a judgment. That was a rewarding, right? The books will be open as what we have read. Why are there books that will be open? How many books? The book of life and the, the book according to what they have done as written in the books, the book of Acts or the book of works. Everything that they have done on earth, it will be read to them. So they will face the judge. So those who will be included in the first restriction, they will face the judge, right? And they will be judged according to what we have read on what have they have done. As we, now, how will be the verdict be made out? You know, because they say, oh, they will be just, so they are doomed, they're already dead. No, wait a minute, don't, don't rush into that conclusion. Uh, how will the verdict be meted out on that day? On, 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 on that occasion, you know, when the, when the books were already open, the dead are being judged, how will, be, how will it be meted out? In John 5, 28, 29. <clears throat> Do not be surprised at this, for a time is coming when all those who are in the tombs will hear his voice and they will come out 
those who did good things will come out to a resurrection of new life. But those who did evil things will come out to a resurrection of judgment. That is to be sentenced. We already know the sentence for those who are sinners, right? Death in the lake of fire. Now, how will the verdict be meted out? Those who did good things will come out to a resurrection of a new life. Now, remember, what does it mean? These are the, the dead who are not in Christ. These are the dead after the first resurrection and after a thousand years. That's the day of judgment. Those who did evil things will come out to a resurrection of judgment. That is to be sentenced. So there is still, according to what we are reading, there are still people who will be resurrected after the first resurrection. There will still be people who will be resurrected, right? But they will be resurrected to life, according to what we have read. Who will be resurrected to life? Those who did good things. Now, how was it illustrated in the book of Matthew? Matthew 25, 33, 34. Let's read this one. And he will put the sheep on his right, the place of honor, and the goats on his left, the place of rejection. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, how was it illustrated in the book of Matthew? Well, you have heard. We are familiar with this. The sheep on the right, the goats on the left. Now, remember, those who died in Christ, the parts of the body of Yahusha was not included here because they were already with Yahusha. They already came back with Yahusha and they were already reigning with Yahusha for a thousand years. So it doesn't make sense if those who are in the church that belongs to Christ will still be facing the judge. They won't face the judge anymore because the blessing were already given to them. But these are those who are not believers. Those who are not believers of Yahushua, they will have a chance. Provided they did something that is right. Something that is good written in the book of works. Everything that they have done while they are on earth will be written there. See, so I remember that. Remember what the scripture is saying. He will put the sheep on his right, the place of honor, and the goats on his left, the place of rejection. Those on his right, the scripture says, those who will be considered a sheep because of their good deeds, they were not considered a sheep by Yahusha himself on the first resurrection. But because they have done also, they did not join. They did not become part of the body of Yahushua. Probably they are in a different body. But they were doing good deeds too. Because not everybody became part of that body of Yahushua. So those on his right, those who will be considered a sheep because of their good deeds, come, the Bible said, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation. Therefore, that's salvation for them. That's why we in the church of Yahushua and those people who claim that they are Christians and they are actually, oh, you're not a member of our church. You're not part of this, this church or this iglesia. So you will not be saved. You are dead wrong saying that. Don't say that because it's because of these verses that we are reading. You know, you don't know who God will save after you were given the reward as a part of the body of Yahushua. And you got included into the first resurrection. And those who uh, did not die yet, they will be uh, together meeting the Lord in the air. You're, you're not going to die anymore. And that was your reward. And that's what we want to be at. That's why we kept our relationship with Yahushua. We continue to be in the church of Yahushua. The one that was prophesied, remember, the prophecy is so important. Without the prophecy, you can just claim. We can just claim. But the prophecy given to the church that belongs to Yahushua is that we should be, we should be there. 
Now, what another event will take place when a thousand years had finished? There is another event that will take place. Let us read 27 and then 10. Revelation. And when a thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison, the abyss. I'm trying to remember that. He got ample time. You know, after a thousand years, it's not over yet. There will be more time for Satan and will come out to deceive and mislead the nations. Remember, people are already good. But try to imagine there will be still people who will be deceived. Mislead the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, including Gog and Magog, to gather them together for a war. Another war. There's another war. Uh, he will retaliate. Satan will retaliate. Their number is like the sand of the seashore. Wow, there's a many people who will be deceived after 1,000 years of reign of Yahusha. And they swarm up over the broad plain of the earth. Of the earth. Sorry about it, the broad plain of the earth, right? And surrounded the camp of the saints or God's people, the millennial kingdom, and the beloved city, Jerusalem. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was hurled into the lake of fire and burning brimstone, sulfur, where the beast, Antichrist, the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So what another event will take place when a thousand years had finished? There will be the final rebellion. And in that final rebellion, there will be lots of people who will join Satan again. Oh, that's so sad. And what are they going to do? They will try to, they will swarm up over the broad plain of the earth and surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But what will happen? There will be fire. Oh, you are in the beloved city, therefore, and you are on earth. So they will be burned. You will be burned too. Oh, no, 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 we will, we will not because this will be the end. Revelations 21, 1 to 4. This is what's going to happen when it, that happened. Revelations 21, 1 to 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, vanished. Wait, the earth will be vanished. The first heaven and the first earth will vanish. And there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. There you go. The holy city will come down. Remember, we left the holy city, <laughs> you know, when we married Yahushua, when we accompanied Yahushua coming down to stage war against the devil and establish his reign as king of kings on the millennial kingdom. See? New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see the tabernacle of God is among men and he will live among them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them. Oh, that's right. God will be with us as their God and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no longer be death for those who got resurrected the second time. There will be no longer be sorrow and anguish or crying or pain for the former order of things has passed away. So, so everybody who will enter that kingdom will experience this thing. You're not gonna get burned when the, uh, the lake of fire come down. You know, when the fire from God will come down and becomes the lake of fire. So we will be inside the holy city. Now, if we are already in the holy city, who will be the king there? It's now God. Remember, there's also a verse that we used to, 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 uh, to read that, uh, God will be all in all. So Yahushua will surrender to, to our God. So God will be all in all. He will be the king inside the holy city. But he, Yahushua, will be the king in the millennial kingdom. Does it make sense? It does. Try to figure it out instead of what you believe before. Now, we believe differently before. That's why we are changing it. This is what we believe now. We were taught something else. We accepted it. That is exactly what the, the apostles were telling us. I, am, I fear that you are easily be changing. You see, we change. Because we did not hear. That now that we heard the truth, it's up to us. You want to, to believe it this way? Or you want to believe the old ways? It's up to you. But for us, this is what we believe. This is what we are sharing with you about what's going to happen 
at the very end of our journey. There will be an end. But that's what's going to take place in that period of time, according to what we have read. If you have any question about what we have the, uh, proclaimed to you tonight, you can ask questions. That's why this is also a, uh, uh, actually this lesson is answering the question of others who are listening to uh, our Bible study. This is how it's going to happen based on what we have right now. This is now the present truth to us. This is what, how it's going to take place. First resurrection, second resurrection. In the first resurrection, those who are in the Yahushua the Christ certainly going to be saved, no longer going to face the judge. Second resurrection, there are good people who died. They will face the judge and the books will be opened to them and they will have a second chance. That's why, which one, that question now, which way you wanna go? You wanna be included in the first resurrection? Join the body of Yahushua the Christ. You want to be facing the judge? Well, it's up to you. But if we want to think about it, I'd rather be vouched by Yahushua on the first resurrection than me facing the judge on the day of judgment. I want that. I want to be here. May God be our guide all the time. And uh, I hope that what we have delivered to you, you will continue to investigate. And uh, before you believe it, investigate it first. Keep on reading what we have already read to you. This concludes our Bible study. We would like to invite everybody again for a prayer. Thank you, Father, for you have allowed us to study your words. Please bless each and every one of us. Uh, what we have heard tonight truly makes sense because it doesn't contradict to what's going to happen, what is in what is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. May you continue to bless each and every one of us. Make us worthy before you, Yahushua. We will stay with you. We want to meet you in the air on the day that uh, you will give the reward. When you are going to meet your kahal or your church, your true followers, we want to be included right there. We don't want to, make, to have a second chance, but we want to be in the first resurrection. That's what we want to be. That's why we're going to be doing what we are supposed to do. We will believe what we're supposed to believe. We will try our very best to obey the commandments that are given unto us. We firmly believe, Father, that you have heard our pleadings and you will be with us as we continue in our journey until the day of the first resurrection. We ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahushua the Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight. And you have questions, you can read there. Thank you for sending us your questions too. And keep on learning with us. Keep on learning with us. We could learn together. And if you do have something to share with us, share it with us and let's study it together. There's nothing wrong with that. We have to learn the truth of what the scripture is telling. This concludes our Bible study. So be safe for the rest of the evening or for the rest of the day, wherever you are at. Thank you.